Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Sade, the cultural activist, back with another episode of Fortify the City. Welcome, welcome. I first want to encourage you all to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever is clever. Follow us, like us. If we trigger you at all, leave a comment. You know, I welcome it, but yeah, let's talk about it. The Bible does not speak about black and white, not in the context of race or skin color. So why do we keep on entertaining these divisive conversations, black people? Why? Why? It is a fact. The conversation of race has long been a subject matter. Even before slavery, this conversation of race issue has gone way back to biblical days. But in the Bible, to my recollection, it was never a black or a white thing. Really, if you yourself have ever read or have any real experience of your own with the word of God, AKA the Bible, you would know that not once was there any real emphasis on race anywhere within it. Nope, not skin color, not even hair texture as some of us have come to hold on to and perpetuate in the culture. Not to mention, if you know anything about geography, if you know anything about the regions listed throughout the Bible, they are not historical European regions at all, but folks still fight against it. When it comes to physical characteristics or descriptions of individuals spoken about in the Bible, there is hardly ever a time where skin color or race was made explicitly clear. And I'm honestly starting to believe that was intentional. The main thing that I can identify as to what could give way to one's race in the Bible are the geographical regions spoken about throughout it. Some of which I can note are regions like Egypt, which was mentioned almost 700 times and another 25 times in the New Testament. Egypt, as we know it today and in the Bible, was an ancient civilization. According to the word of God, the Israelites spent about 400 years of enslavement in Egypt. Egypt and Israel share borders, actually. It's the region spanning the northeast corner of Africa and the southwest corner of Asia by a land bridge formed by the Sinai Peninsula. Egypt has one of the longest history of any country. And speaking of the longest history, some archaeologists will even tell you that the skeletal remains of the first man to walk Earth was found in the region or continent of Africa. But hey, let me not incite you all to jump to any conclusions. Moving on. Damascus, which is modern day in Syria. We got Babylon or Babylonia, modern day Mesopotamia, which occupies present day Iraq and parts of Iran, Turkey, Syria, Kuwait. And there's Bethlehem, which is identified as the city King David was from and where he was crowned as the King of Israel. The book of Matthew and Luke identify Bethlehem as the birthplace of Jesus. Bethlehem is a city in the West Bank of Palestine, about 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles south of Jerusalem. For the most part, the regions mentioned in the Bible straddle around Asia and North Africa, which if we based anything on this, there are a few conclusions that we can draw from, right? Asian or North African, I'm just saying. And then the biggest question of them all concerning Christianity, as it is often stressed within the black community is, what race was Jesus? Was he black? Was he white? That subject or defense is often used to undermine Christianity and the Bible. It has caused much division within the culture, not to mention outside of the culture. First, tackling the race of Jesus. Us black folk are apt to paraphrase the verse where it speaks of Jesus having hair like wool and then assuming that meant that his hair texture was like that of black people therefore making him black and others support the claim that because a white person oversaw the most notable version of the bible that we know today in english literature the king james bible that the word in which we know it could not be pure or the true word of god Well, first of all, there are many different authors connected to different books of the Bible. It is known as the divine word of God ultimately spoke through these historical characters. And then the leg that most unbelievers or naysayers tend to lean on is the fact that King James I of England, playing a role in the first translation of the Bible, had it published in 1611. King James I representing the face of slavery as we know it to be here in the US and many other regions. And because of that, 
many black folk don't do the Bible. As the King James Version is the one in which most slaves were brought upon. So there is a major distrust, which is totally understandable. However, as egotistical, arrogant, and inherently racist as we know our traditional oppressors to be, notice one thing. Even the King James Version does not assert to any particular white race or even makes mention while there are certain books of the first Bible left out, it still doesn't mention race. And to me, that's saying something. There are two scriptures that may potentially make reference to Jesus' race. Daniel 7, 9 says, As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, the hair of his head was white as wool, his throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. Hair white like wool, not hair like wool. Take note of the distinction in the wording and be careful not to jump the gun, all right? Revelation 1 verses 14 and 15 says, the hair of his head was white like wool, as white like snow, and his eyes were like a blazing fire. Verse 15 says, His feet were like polished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roaring of many waters. So, in verse 15, it talks about the color of his feet, which would normally indicate to us his skin color being of a bronze tone, dark tan or light brown. Definitely not white but not necessarily black either. Hmm. This is still somewhat of a mystery, although maybe it shouldn't be. And furthermore, because too, the Bible isn't spoken in the literal sense as it is more figurative and spiritually led, we have to also consider the fact that a lot of the terms and characteristics used to describe Jesus were strongly considered similes of divine attributes, not necessarily skin color or anything like that. Yeah. But moving on and then there is the subjects of love and division and its effects on us the different communities or groups religions the bible there are so many factors that we can consider into play here and it's not just outside of the different ethnic groups but also within and i know i'm starting to sound like a broken record when i speak about this but hey until it seeps in i'll be talking about it so one when it comes to being fortified when i think of fortification i think of the support of an army the greater the army the greater the chances of victory and the army is only as great as its number listen rome wasn't built in a day and most definitely wasn't built by one person it took a group with a focused plan or belief and a goal terms like united we stand divided we fall come to mind and it's true a weak army is one that is unfortified, of course, lacks support, love, one that is easily divided based on the things like strength or power, fitness and wellness, and more relatable things like affluence, status, income, race, politics, even food, and we can go on. In the Bible, there was a divide with regard to believers and unbelievers, and what do you know? That case still remains today. There are so many parallels if you really want to get into it and talk about it. Jews didn't believe in their own Messiah, hence an open door of opportunity for the Gentiles to be welcomed into the kingdom. Ephesians 3, 6 talks about the Jews and the Gentiles being joint heirs. There are Jews who are believers and there are Gentiles who are believers. And with that, we can also infer that there are unbelievers within both groups. How many times can we talk about the lack of support within our own race and culture? Culture, those spending their money and furnishing their support outside of their communities and those things and not taking the word of their own kind for the sake of a more dominant kind think about it and this is not to cause more division especially as it pertains to the distinct ethnic groups but I'm just trying to paint a picture for you there is nothing new under the Sun and that's the Word of God and then the conversation of love. Division can abolish love in one fell swoop, causing confusion, miscommunication, disagreements, leading to hate, war, you name it. That's how easily things happen and fester on. And here we go, producing episodes like Fortify the City, trying to bring us all back together again. What do you know?
the Bible and all its mystery when it comes to the race and skin color of Jesus, that one still remains unspecified to the utmost. And I don't think it's coincidence that that part was left out. And when you look at it, it really shouldn't matter. Differences like race and such make it almost impossible to love, to forgive. It's difficult to move forward if not for racial issues and tensions. We even see it more and more in our current climate in regards to topics like reparations, the LGBTQ community versus the church. And that's just a couple of examples. The images of Christ as we know it, you know, white guy with brown shoulder length hair may not be true to form and folks should not negate the entire faith because of one perpetuated image at least not before taking up the book and reading it for yourself even if jesus wasn't black the likelihood that he was white is just as questionable trust me on that one and then between evolution and those things the mixing of races something that was happening before christ as well as today it would be hard to fully determine what the race of jesus really was so let's just get off of that part please don't mess around and miss out on heaven because of something so insignificant the most significant thing regarding all of this humankind should be love and that's bible but that's all I'm going to say about that. Listen, there are so many other subjects of conversations to come. Love being the new commandment, Christianity and the LGBTQ movement. So much more to come. So come back next time. Have a good day, y'all.